Is it good? Hold on. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, this is Coach Tom. <laughs> <laughs> looks like we were starting our own stream and there was an ad running yeah. already so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> all right um let's just wait a couple minutes or maybe a minute or two until we see people start showing up and then we'll cut this out uh after we get oh look we got maciak who says first momar and Daye. hello what's hey, up momar? how are you guys today and hayden sink <clears throat> hey cool cool now my voice is starting to go away again i don't yeah. know what's up <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're just going to wait a couple, maybe a minute until we yeah. get some, a couple more people to show up and then we'll start into what we're going to talk about. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to send us your questions, uh, let me know, uh, what those might be. And we'll try to get to as many people as we possibly can. And, uh, let's tell them what the topic is. They could be thinking about it a little bit too. Yeah. <clears throat> well, if you guys read the top of the page, it, it is, uh, where should your set point be? Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of people start down here or they start the kind of what we think is the right place or behind their head. Right. Lots of variation there. Yeah. Let's see how long my voice lasts because this is not good. <laughs> Mine's a little gravelly today, too. <clears throat> Who's the last person who came there? Casey? MC Adams. Mine is near my eye. I'm five foot eight. Okay. Yeah. We will, we will get into that in just a second. Yeah, we will, yeah. All right. Why don't we just start? Let's, if let's people show up, that's cool. If they don't, well, that's they're, their they're loss. They're missing something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <clears throat> There's one more cough. Clear it out. Okay. Uh, what's up, everybody? everybody? This is Casey. I'm Coach Tom. And this is Shot Science Overtime number 205. 205. I was looking at some the other day that were 90 at... That was a long time ago, Casey. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing it for a while. Um, soon we will be in our studio that we built, and we will do our live shows from there as well as the other videos. So stay tuned for that. Um, we like to have these live shows so that we connect with you guys, answer your questions, and try to kind of uh, just have one-on-one -on -one, right. uh, that are more personal than the tutorial videos or anything else that we do. And be able to interact with you guys too. <clears throat> wow. Um, so we have a topic that we like to do at the top of the show, which is something that we think is going to help you guys become a better basketball player, sure. maybe cut out some of the learning curve and, uh, you know, make it a little bit easier on you if we can, right. if we can attempt to do that. Um, so while we're doing that, you guys are going to be thinking of questions to ask us. And after we're done with our topic, it becomes your time. And we answer as many questions as we can in the time that we have. And, uh, you know, just have a discussion about basketball. Yep. And oh, MC Adams says, thanks for doing this. We love to do this. Yeah, this, is, do. this is fun to do. We do. Um, and if you could, go out there and tell your friends and family or anybody that's into basketball to watch us do these things because that helps us do them again. Yep. Um, you know, like we said, we've done 205 and we want to do some more too. Um, and if you could, you know, you can support us and go check out shotscience.com or get some merch stuff like our t-shirts and, and wear those around. If you want to get a hat, we can uh, help figure that out for you too. And, uh, we have a lot of stuff, uh, in terms of training, like the vertical jump box and some online training stuff for you at shotscience.com and check us out on all of our wonderful social media stuff, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all those places. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, the question that we like to ask you guys every week, this is the question of the day every time we meet for these things, and I almost forgot last time, yeah. is that we want to know this question. Where are you located in the world? Yeah, we want to know we if you guys, yeah. yeah, we want to know if you guys are from California like we are, yeah. or if you're from, or from Australia, or from Nigeria, or Lithuania. <laughs> Uh, that's always our go-to is Lithuania. Yeah. It's a big basketball place. But we want to know where you guys are from because it's usually from all over the world, whether, uh, you know, from our neck of the woods or on the other side of the planet. So yep. let us know. Like Momar, he's from Senegal, and he's here oh, right. all the time. Yeah, he is. Um, and we will do some shout-outs of people that let us know that question, and we'll bring it up again, too, at the end uh, just so that we can get everybody involved. Right. Okay, so let's get into our 
uh, topic today, which is um, where your set point should be. You know, that's that's something that's kind of a, a problem for a lot of young shooters, particularly. Um, a lot of them uh, start down here, but uh, right in front of their chin. Yep. Uh, some of them uh, will start higher, and the and the ball will be behind their head. And so those are not very good places to be. The third one that, that crops up is they'll bring the ball up and they've got it right in front of their shooting eye and they can't really see the basket. And we never want to be there with our set point. Let's talk about the reasonings behind why we don't want to be in those places first. Okay. The okay. Reason, Number one. Go ahead. go ahead. This low set point right on your chest or shoulder. It's because if you have your, your shot there, your shot typically kind of turns into a shot put. Yeah. And you kind of lose the ability to control it. And, you know, it's not it, it, a lot of times it's used because people don't have the power to get the ball to the basket. Right. And that's usually younger players. Yeah. And so instead of using your legs or using your legs and this method, you are basically giving up your ability to be accurate to get more power. Right. And so it really will affect the way that you're able to dial in kind of that accuracy. And it's not a good way to shoot the basketball. Really? And now, however, let me back up and give you a, a little exception. When we're shooting free throws, you can shoot from here because they're not going to be contested. But still, we want to have the proper shooting mechanics if we start at a lower set point. Go ahead. Well, now, I mean, my, my one conflict me, with that is that you don't want to have different shots for different spots. You know, I mean, that's not really my favorite thing. Well, I kind of favor that myself because some people have difficulty in shooting above their eyes when they're going to shoot the basketball or, or above their face. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, the next one is in front of your shooting eye or in front of your face. So it's like the ball is like right here. Uh, you know, that obviously has a lot of problems because you're blocking your vision. And again, it's kind of a little bit of a low set yeah. point. Yes, exactly. And <clears throat> if you look at your arm, let's see, this is always fun to figure this out in the mirror image. If you look at your arm, it's kind of less L-shaped and more V-shaped right here. So what difference does that make? Because if you start to shoot with that V, you're not going to get as much elevation. It's kind of going to be more of a, a lever kind of come straight out instead of extending up into your shot. And that's a real important item because probably <coughs> anybody that has been around us uh, on the internet before uh, knows that we are, are huge <coughs> on having a nice arc in your shot. Some examples of people that I just really get delighted about is watching Curry and and Thompson and Durant with those nice high arcs. And you might ask again, just a little aside, why? Well, the reason why is that actually we're shooting at a bigger target when we shoot with a ball with more arc. When we shoot a flat shot, what happens is that the, the uh, rim begins to shrink down. It doesn't really change shape, but we can only get into the back half of it. And so the front half of it, or maybe the front third of it, uh, is unusable. Yeah. So we're trying to take a nine and a half inch ball uh, and stuff it into a 10 inch hole. We can do that. We can shoot free throws with our eyes closed and make them from time to time too, but that's not going to give us the best result. And so the other thing about the night arc, and just a little aside here, Casey, is that we want the ball when it hits the rim to bound upward. When you shoot a flat arc, the ball usually will will go away from the basket. Yep. And what we really want is one that's going to bound up because it still has a chance to get in the hole. Okay, so the final one that is not a great spot, I and mean, there's other places that people put them, whether it's over their shoulder or whatever, but this is one that you'll see a lot as they go over the top of their head or back behind their head. The reason why that is not good is because you, again, have to elevate the ball. So you're either going to have to pull it forward and, you know, again, you're going to get that flat kind of shot again, yeah. or it's more of a heave on the release than anything else. And yeah. so you don't really get the proper uh, uh, kind of a very smooth mechanics when you do that. Or accurate for that yeah. matter. Well, yeah. that's what I mean is like the, the more complex your shooting motion is, the less accurate you're going to be because you have to be able to make it repeatable. Right. And the more moving parts that you have, the less accurate you will be. Right. Okay, so the good play or the kind of the, the sweet spot of the, of the set point is kind of the in-between of all of those. And it's out here 
above and in front of your shooting eye. So like over in this area. And you're looking under the ball, actually under your thumb, right at the hoop. Yep. And the reason that we do that is because if you are going up into your, your shooting uh, motion, you're going to elevate and without very little, uh, you know, any other kind of directional motion, you're going to finish at just the right spot to get the lift and the, the arc needed to get the ball to the basket. Right. right? Okay. So that's kind of why you want to have that set point right where it is uh, instead of kind of having it down here where you're basically heaving it and behind your head where you're kind of just launching it and in front of your face where you don't have the proper vision. Let's talk about something else that's kind of important with this too. Uh, when we shoot jump shots, um, we have uh, one freshman student that insists on shooting his jump shot from here. He will never get that off in a game because the defensive person is going to be able to reach out and <clears throat> contest that shot. Yeah. But we've been encouraging him to get from here up to a higher set point and when he gets to the higher set point, what happens is now he can get the ball usually up and over. The, the lower the ball is, the less likelihood you're going to be able to shoot it. Yeah, and in having that low set point, that's very common for kids that start out younger. Yep. And especially when they're trying to use the big ball on the big hoop. Yep. And <clears throat> one of the reasons why having proper equipment for the proper size and age is really important. Yeah. Because that person will have to make some kind of adjustment or change to their shot Otherwise, they will not be able to move up the levels of basketball. Right. Because you can't shoot a shot from your chest, you know, if you're trying to get into the higher levels of basketball. It just doesn't work. Right. And, and this young, uh, young guy was saying, that feels awful. Well, I know it feels awful because anything that is different than what you normally do doesn't feel comfortable. But the point is, is this, is that when you get to a... Uh, uh, a situation where you're trying to change a shot to be more effective as a shooter, it's going to feel really crazy, and you have to work on uh, getting to accept that. And when you accept it, you're going to be really pleased with the result. Yep. Uh, okay, do we think we've covered that? Okay, you guys are going to have to send us your questions because uh, we need more to be able to get through the time. And, you know, if you don't do it now, usually we run out of time. So uh, get mm -hmm. your questions in right now and we will. Okay, so let's start uh, jumping into all these people here. Uh, let's see here. Get Dunked On 39 says, I'm 6'4". My set point is right at my eyebrow. Well, if it's at your eyebrow and you're looking under the ball, that's a good location. Yeah, but just make sure you don't have it right on your face. Yeah. You know, you want to have it out and extended so that your, your arm is in that L shape. Let's see. Ooh, it's hard to do it like that. Okay, let's see here. Are we back? Can you guys see us? <laughs> <laughs> If you guys see us, let us know and hear us too. Anybody there? All right, well, let's just get back. And if, if it works out, everybody will know us or let us know. Um, let's see here. Momar and Daya says, uh, is it okay to have a different shot when you shoot a jump shot and a different free throw? You know, it is. Um, you don't have to shoot a free throw like from above your head. Uh, you can actually take and just lower the ball down so you're looking over the top of the ball. The mechanics are, are all the <clears> same. <throat> it's the thing that is really different is that when you're shooting a jump shot, usually you're trying to get your legs involved. Even though you're shooting free throws, you need to get those legs involved there too because that's the base of our power. We talk about that all the time, and that is if you have 100% of your power for a shot, about 20% of it, plus or minus, is from your arms and shoulders. And those are your guiding, that's your guidance system that really is directing the ball where you want it to go. And the real power comes from your core muscle groups and your legs. That's where the real power comes from. Yeah, I mean, I would say that you want your free throw to be 
uh, your shot should be as few moving parts as you possibly have to use. Yep. So when you're out on the court and it's like, you know, go time and you have to do uh, like a jump shot or something like that, then you're going to have to jump to get the shot off. Yep. I mean, that's part of the thing. If you're shooting a free throw, you don't have to do the jumping motion. You don't have to do the extra, uh, you know, stepping on the shot stuff, but you have to be able to figure out your rhythm and everything. It's not the same shot in the, in the sense that you don't have to do some of these extra movements that make your shot more complex. Right. But the shooting mechanics in terms of your release and everything like that, they should be 100% the exact same. Right. Right? Yep. Thank you guys for letting us know that I guess we're back online. Hopefully people will start to come back. Uh, tell people to, to show up. That will help us greatly. Um, but we may have to end it early here. Somebody from New Jersey, Casey. Yep. Uh, get dunked on 39 from New Jersey. MC Adams is from High Point, North Carolina. Sheikh Saleh is from Al Ain, UAE. Uh, yeah, that's cool. MC Adams says it's hard to shoot deep with a high set point without slowing down your release. You have um, to use so much more leg, at least for me. I've been using Steve Nash and Steph for reference. When I have a full L position, it slips out of my fingers as I shoot, maybe my small hands. Um, that could have something to do with it. But let me just tell you this, is that one of the things that when we have a, a shot, we want to have, let me have the ball for a second. We want to have our fingers, particularly our thumb spread. I don't know if you can see that. But we want to spread our thumb out so that we can use the thumb and the opposing little finger to grip the basketball. When we just lay our hand flat on the ball like this, we don't have much control right and left. As soon as we spread that, then, then that happens to be very good. Hold the top of the ball, will you, Casey? All right, and so when you are gripping the ball, we, we always teach that you want to have one finger space between the bottom of the ball and your palm, and that gives you the best release point. Now, the ball, uh, you say it's up on your fingers. Probably you have that space a little bit too big. What was the other part of that question there? The jump shot shooting... Uh, using more leg and shooting from a full L position slips out of his fingers as he shoots. Uh, because you're probably not gripping the basketball <clears throat> with a thumb. Uh, I mean, that's huge. And I mean, the ball should never really fall out of your hands. No. It doesn't matter how big your hands are because, you know, we work with like little girls that literally have tiny hands. Right. And the thing is, is that your grip on the basketball might be a little wonky. Uh, in terms of like what Coach Tom was saying, like you want to have that proper grip where you're opposing finger or little finger and thumb with that space there, but also your assist hand is right here on the side of the ball holding it in at the set point. It comes off as you extend your hand up, but you shouldn't really have problems with the ball falling out. There should be, there's maybe something else going on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Even so, if you have small hands, it still uh, shouldn't be happening. <clears throat> And like Casey said, it probably has to do with the thumb and little finger gripping. And, you know, when <clears> people <throat> say it's hard for me to shoot from deep because I can't get enough power, I can't do this, I can't do that, the problem is you're trying to shoot from deep and you are not prepared to shoot from there yet. You need to progressively move back before you just start shooting Steph Curry yeah. threes. You yeah. know, you have to start at two feet away from the basket, get the mechanics down, make those shots with – you know, more than just regularity, make them every single time, take a step back, work on that range, take a step back, work on that range. And you shouldn't compromise your mechanics. Your mechanics should basically stay exactly the same, whether you're shooting at three or 23 feet, it should always basically be the same. And yeah, you're going to have to learn to harness more power and energy from your legs, but you know, if you do that progressively, you'll find that your body just kind of does that for you and you don't have to actively think about doing that. Yeah, one of the problems we have about <laughs> generating power when we shoot and getting the legs involved is sometimes we set and we shoot what is called a two-part shot. A two-part shot kind of goes like this. You're shooting a jumper uh, or even a, just a free throw and what happens is your legs come to the very point where they don't produce any more power and there's a little pause right there and then your arms go. And what happens is this, is that when you are left with just shooting with your arms and hands, that's only about 20% of your power. And usually the shot is going to be short and flat. And as soon as you get into connecting, 
uh, the legs to the upper body, you'll find that the power is going to be there. It's going to be really easy. Uh, the connection uh, goes like this. Before you, your legs get straight, your legs are already, or your arms already in motion to shoot the basketball. And that's when you pick up that power to get you to <clears throat> shoot that 19-9 uh, shot that you want, all want to have. Uh, yeah, and MC Adam says, uh, not fall out, but when I go to shoot and flick my wrist, it spins out instead of going forward. Okay. That probably has to do with grip. Yeah, and, you know, the other thing is is that when you f when people say flick their wrist, I know it's part of that song, and everybody yeah. loves to hear it, and, you know, whatever. That is the worst term to use, and, and that is not the way that your shooting release should uh, be coming off is flicking right because that in imparts that there's going to be some tension like when I flick something I have to you know do this with a lot of tension I can feel it in my arm and it shouldn't be something where I am just trying to you know just jerk my wrist over the top and fling my hand over that is not going to be a lot of finesse so when you are shooting uh, your shot um, you want that wrist to flop over the top. It should literally just be the most gentle motion as your wrist breaks over the top or your hand breaks over the top of your wrist. But not less powerful. Yeah. You, don't, you don't reduce the power. All you're going to do is reduce the rotation as you release the ball. Yeah, so if you think about all the energy you put in when you're flicking, uh, that is going to be put into the ball. And so you're, the ball is just going to be spinning like crazy and when it hits the backboard or the rim or whatever, it's going to let that energy go. And that's not really what you want to have happen. You right. want the ball to just die if it touches anything on the basket. Uh, because that will keep it close to the basket, which might give it a chance to fall in. If it's got all this energy and it hits anything and it just flings off, well, you don't even get a second chance right. at it. It creates a long rebound, yeah. So, And, you know, I know people want to have that ball spinning like crazy, and when it goes through the net, it just sounds like it rips it and all that. But that's that's not an optimal way to approach your shot. You want it to be a gentle backspin that really just helps the ball kind of um, – uh, be stable in flight and, and then, lazy and then when it hits the rim it is real lazy and it just has fingers and stays right there at the rim uh, that's that's such an important element of the shot is just that relaxation and slowing the rhythm down and here's a way that we characterize it an <coughs> awful lot if we take and uh, have a ball that's spinning really hard what happens is that is energy that is captured in that basketball and when that basketball runs into something hard like the rim or the backboard for that matter, it's going to have a long rebound. If we take and have a, a shot that is turning really very slowly, and let's say from the free throw line, it makes two revolutions uh, uh, on its way to the basket, okay? And that's good. If you're out the three line, maybe it takes and makes four rotations. What happens when the ball gets to the rim? It doesn't have much energy in it anymore, and so it tends to stay around the basket. And if you have a nice art, it will tend to bound up. And so you get those shots where, uh, you know, some people call them lucky shots, but I don't because those are the things that you want to be looking to be able to do. A nice soft release with those fingers and the wrist being very relaxed. You watch the great shooters, most of them in the NBA, and probably college players as well, have a real relaxed wrist when they release the ball. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, when people say certain keywords that, you know, have classically been used in shooting or yep. even just basketball terms like – uh, flick the wrist or square up, snap the wrist, snap the wrist. You know, I know that those are just out there and sometimes people just use those because those are the words that we use. But uh, we try to move away from using words like flick and trade that in for flop because that's really what your hand and, and wrist should be doing. Uh, square up, you know, that's not really what's taught anymore because, you know, you're shooting a one handed shot. So you want to kind of get a favoring towards that side. Um, well, so it's a little bit, you know, we hear that we get triggered a little bit. Yeah. And so that's why, uh, you know, try not to, to use that kind of terminology and also try to change your shooting mechanics so that your your release is this gentle uh, accuracy machine. And it is not just uh, trying to impart power or anything into the ball. What is really surprising about that relaxation of the wrist is that your your wrist, your shot usually becomes more accurate. We have a girl that plays for us, and 
and she's a sophomore in high school, and she mechanics shooting. Mechanics, starting to get to the point where they're looking a little better. And then finally, we get that relaxation of the wrist. She started getting the ball to go in the basket much more often than she was when she was snapping her wrist. Yeah. Now, what Chris is <coughs> saying, too, I think is a real important uh, thing to throw out there. There are a lot of people who, who know about shooting and a lot of them who think they uh, have got the answer to it. We don't think we have the answer to it necessarily, but we like our approach because we think it's more realistic. And um, what happens is that we have shooters who are really successful using our system. Well, we've, we've done a lot of work in analyzing uh, <clears throat> what we talk about and making sure that it makes sense, yep. uh, you know, and also making sure that uh, it, it works across the board for everybody because, yep. you know, it's hard to teach something like this where there's so many different kinds of bodies and, uh, you know, everybody is taught the same kind of things and stuff. So one of the things that's super important to us and our teaching points is that everything is as simple as it p can possibly be right. and that your shooting mechanics aren't a bunch of, uh, you know, cliches, well, cliches, but even just things that are unnecessary, um, kind of variables that you're just throwing into your shot. Like let's move our legs, let's tweak our shoulder. Let's do like all of that stuff. Um, it just makes the shot harder to repeat each time you shoot it, right. which, you know, if you're not able to repeat your mechanics, you're not going to be accurate because your, your repeatability is going to increase your accuracy. It will. Yeah. And so you want everything to be this fine moving machine, which, you know, it's like comparing like an old timey car to like a new car where today's cars are so complex and there's yeah. computers and there's all these things. If something goes wrong, it's like a catastrophic failure. You got to go in, you got to get it fixed and it costs all this money. Whereas if you have this old car from like the 70s. Oh, I was thinking the 50s. Oh, yeah. Well, even then, you know, there's no uh, there's no real, um, you know, guesswork at what it is. It's like everything is very straightforward. The engine, you know, it has these very specific moving parts that get the car to actually move. Like it's it's and, simple. And, it, yeah, and, and if you had to work on it, you could climb inside of it and stand on the ground and change the spark plugs. That's that's from my time. Yeah. Um, okay. And, you know, so you don't want to have this super complex gourmet shot. You yeah. know, you want to have it be the meat and potatoes of your shot. If we can throw in any more analogies and cliches, <laughs> you know, that's that's all good. But okay. but it, it's true. You want to have that smooth, simple shot that you can repeat every single time. Exactly right. The great shooters have that. Yep. Um, another qualifier, though, before we go on. Great shooters have days where they couldn't hit a bull in the butt with a scoop shovel. They just couldn't. Be. And the reason is, who knows? Sometimes they're just one little element that maybe is off. They come back in the next game, and they can drop a whole bunch of them again. So uh, Curry's one of those kind of people. Uh, same thing with Thompson, and, because we watch a lot of their games, so we kind of know what they do. But um, sometimes you're going to have off days. There's no question about it. And you live with them, and then you get right back to where you need to be. Yep. Um, and again, the more simple your shot is, the easier it is to get things back to where they need right, to be. Right. Um, okay. Um, MC Adams says, so make the arm an extension of the lower body. Yeah. That's kind a good, of. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. It's just an extension of the lower body. <clears throat> but, you know, the, the, the lower body is your power source. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's your rocket boosters that get you into orbit. Right. And your your um, shooting upper, you know, the upper body, your shooting release, all that should be the refined, uh, you know, accuracy movements that right. should be trying to get the ball accurately to within that tiny uh, margin of error yeah. to the basket. If you're trying to power with your upper body, you're not going to have the accuracy, but you have to also make everything connect. We call it connectivity from the feet to the follow through. Everything connects. There's no sticking points or stopping points. Right. Uh, Flippin' Lou says, who's your favorite player? Hmm. Well, you know, I usually, for me personally, I use, usually will watch the Warriors play. Well, that's because we're from the Bay Area. We're from the Bay Area. And I, I like to watch them play because of the movement, uh, because their offense is, is not just a one-on-one -on -one group while the other four people watch. And they're very effective that. One of the things you're seeing around the NBA is that the more teams are using that kind of offense where there's a lot of movement. And so they're fun to watch. Uh, and I like the fact that 
they've got three or four guys who can really shoot the basketball. That's that's fun to watch. So who's your favorite player? Um, I think probably uh, Curry, even though he makes some kind of a passes that drive me crazy, but they're lazy passes and people are able to pick them off. But just generally speaking, he has such great ball skills uh, and then he has such great stroke skills on his basketball shot. Uh, I mean, he makes shots that sometimes are just so unbelievable. Well, what it was, he was shot one from 60, uh, three from 61 feet last week, I think it was. Yep. How many people can do that? I mean, there's a few that have done it. Who's your favorite all time then? Uh, all time, you know, uh, just all time. I think probably uh, uh, Irvin Johnson probably would be one of the top ones for me. Magic? Magic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, probably followed up by uh, Bill Russell, who goes back to the 50s and 60s. Um, he w had a great influence on the game of basketball and, and changing how it was being played. And in this... In, in the area where we're from, too, because he was yeah. a San Francisco guy. Yep, he was. Um, I think Larry Bird probably is my favorite all-time. Right. I mean, he, he was playing when I was a little kid, but, I mean, if you watch highlights of him playing, it is, it is crazy. Well, it is. And, you know, you watch some of the, uh, the specials they have on ESPN or whatever, and, and they talk about the fact that he was so confident that he told people he was going to shoot left-handed yeah. yeah. the whole game yeah. and he got like 40 something points or something like that yeah. and and you know he just had ultimate confidence and you know even though he wasn't on the athletic level of a lot of those guys even though he's yeah. very athletic for a six foot nine guy right. uh you know he wasn't like dr j or or uh you know people like that but he still he was a dominant f force i mean he's like a top two or three player of all time for yeah. me yeah with Michael being number one, yeah, truly. not LeBron. <laughs> um, okay, <clears throat> that's how we start some controversy with is with talking like that. Um, let's see. Uh, Baron Magic says, "Have you seen Boban Marjanovic uh, shoot three pointers, and what do you think about his technique?" Uh -oh. I've watched him play a few times. I don't know if I've really watched him shoot any threes. Uh -huh. uh, have you? Yep. You've watched him shoot the threes. Yeah, I have. And, and you know, one of the things that's interesting uh, about European players, and they don't, they don't all come from the same place, but most of them uh, that come to the NBA can shoot the basketball. Who's this young player that's, I think he's 19 years old. His name is Doncic. Luka. Uh, and I can't remember now who he plays for. But, Dallas. Um, he shoots the ball wherever he wants it, and uh, usually that thing goes in. And, and to be very honest, it's because they shoot the ball – like we teach shooting. And um, I think they do a better job of, of teaching shooting in Europe than they do here. Well, there's, there's uh, less of an well, emphasis on athleticism and more on technique and exactly, form and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly, and, and in this uh, country and, and, and professional basketball and probably all levels of basketball, there's more of a premium put on the fact that some players are just more athletic than others, and they can do things that a lot of people can't. And so oftentimes a lot of those guys get on to the NBA. There's quite a few good shooters that are uh, American players, too, that can shoot the ball pretty good. Uh, but it just seems like the Europeans do a great job, just like well, Nowitzki. I mean, that guy, he's just scary. I watched him hit six in a row the other night. Yeah. I would also say that uh, women and <laughs> girls basketball is the same kind of way, yeah. uh, especially as you get higher level in that. I mean, you watch people like Elena Deladon shoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is an all-time great shooter. Yes. And if and you know she, her free throw percentage is like the craziest of you know I think I think it's like ninety percent or more. Yeah. Um, but her her shooting form is perfect, and she's a woman that's you know six foot five or whatever, which is you know the equivalent of a guy that's like six ten, six eleven. Right. Um, so, you know, don't just watch the, the, the pro guys. Watch some of these women uh, or just watch the women's basketball. It is some higher level technical basketball. Right. And, you know, there are some very athletic women, but they don't just rely on that stuff. Yeah, like right. they're out there and they have mo – many of them have great mechanics and stuff. Right. <coughs> Excuse me. My voice is just dying here. Um, 
Rico Suave says, your channel is how I learned how to play basketball. Thanks. Yeah, I think well, that's I, great to hear. Yeah, I think I remember you from way back in the day. Yeah. Um, let's see. MC Adams says, so by what you're saying, J.J. Redick would be a great example of that set point and form. Yes, sure. Yes, he would. <coughs> yes, he would. He, and he's classic in the, stro in the fact that the stroke is, is kind of like how we teach it as well. And he has perfected the release and whatnot. He shoots the ball really, really well. Most of the time. Most of the time. All right. Uh, my voice is deteriorating, so we're going to do this and wrap it up. Um, this one is from Zoomzy, who says, How do I find my shot? I'm very inconsistent and feel like maybe I should remake my shot. What should I do? Well, maybe more <coughs> than remake your shot, uh, take a video of yourself and, and, and watch that video and see how the elements of the shot come together. It could be that you've got some little thing in there that's keeping you from being successful that you don't know about. And that may sound really strange, but oftentimes <laughs> there's an element maybe where we're, our stroke is a little flat, uh, our stroke is a little high, and, and our, we're snapping the ball at the finish. One of the things that shooters do oftentimes is they pronate the wrist out to the side, usually to the shooting <coughs> hand side, and that will drag the ball in that direction. I get my directions here, I'm looking backwards. Uh, and so video yourself and video yourself from all four angles, front, back, um, and side, side. And, and then look at it and see what's going on. And then if you're still a little frustrated, uh, take and get a <coughs> hold of us and send your video out to us and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, and if your shot feels wonky, like now is the time mm -hmm. to change it. Like don't keep working on it while it's still wonky and yep. then have that be comfortable and then try to change it later. Yeah. Do one, it right now. One of the things that happens, we have students uh, and you know, we probably have in the course of a year, maybe uh, several hundred students. And uh, oftentimes one will call and coach, can I come? My shot's gone south on me. <coughs> They'll come and we'll watch them work for maybe three or four minutes or so. And we can usually identify really quickly what it is that's the problem. And as soon as they start to work on it, the shots start to come around. And so uh, we're here. Um, and you can also use our videos to kind of help you figure out. But do your own video and see what it is that you see. Okay, uh, this one is from Yashin Siddiqui, who says, I'm a big fan. You guys help me get sh uh, help me to shoot, but I have a question. If I shot a jump shot, should I have my left hand in the shot, or should I remove it when I shoot? By the way, I'm a right-handed shooter. Remove it but just before the release. If you're up there, just release that hand as you're beforehand. shooting. Yeah, as you're shooting, that hand, as it elevates, should just fall away. You don't need that hand, especially if you've got the, the ball being gripped by the thumb and the little finger you'll have control of the basketball. I would say go watch our video on the assist hand, and then also you can watch our videos in the super slow motion right. that we have on our channel. You can see kind of what that hand is doing from right. different angles. Right. Um, Baron Magic says, yep, Elena career shooting from free throw is 93%. Wow, wow, that's crazy. Abdul Raruf Hayat Khan says, how to finish inside against tall players when you're short. Go check out our video at on finishes at the rim. Exactly. And then also, it always helps to have the ability to play in different positions. So check out our videos on playing in the post. Yeah. Even if you're a short player or a perimeter player or whatever, if you're able to put together how to play in the post, that will only help you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of ways to kind of neutralize people's height um, against them. Exactly. Okay, so that's going to do it for us today, you guys. We're going to ask you uh, again. Our question of the day is, where in the world are you guys from? Tell us in the comments, and uh, we love to see that. We are in California, but we want to know where you guys are from. Um, I guess uh, let's do the question that we did last week, too. What is one thing today that you need to go work on with your shot to make you a better shooter? Yep. Uh, let us know that down in the comments. Make sure you guys go check out shotscience.com. If you can, get a shirt. Yep. Uh, we can help you get hats. Hat. Um, that only helps us do more things, and we, it will help us make more tutorial videos, which we are getting back into as well. Um, and also uh, follow us on all of our social media fun stuff like yeah. uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> um, and we will see you guys next time, hopefully 1 p.m. Pacific time on a Sunday. All right. All right. See you guys later. Bye.